Are you planning on getting a bearded dragon? But you're still wondering about their diet? My name is Stella, and today I'm going to be teaching you about a bearded dragon's diet. This video is a collaboration with Clumsy Critters. On their channel, they're going to be doing a hamster diet video. Feel free to check out their channel. I'm joined with my bearded dragon, Pixie. As juveniles, or young bearded dragons, they need to have a diet of 70% bugs and 30% um, greens. However, when they're adults, that all completely changes. What happens when they're adults is it flip-flops. What happens when they're adults is that um, the bearded dragons start to have 70% greens and 30% bugs. So it's kind of crazy to think about because as juveniles, it's like completely different. So just a tip, um, when your bearded dragon is young, and if you get your bearded dragon young, then you should definitely start them off on vegetables and try to like teach them to eat their vegetables because when once they're adults, they're going to have to eat 70% of vegetables. But also, if your bearded dragon doesn't want to eat your vegetables, I don't blame you because bearded dragons are naturally picky and don't like to eat their vegetables. My bearded dragon doesn't always eat her vegetables. So, yeah, that's just a tip. The first thing we're going to be talking about in a bearded dragon's diet is bugs. Now, quickly before I mention the bugs that I would recommend feeding your bearded dragon, um, I just want to mention that you should be feeding bugs um, the width like in between their eyes. Also, I want to mention that you should not be feeding wild caught animals. Do not be bringing any animals from the wild and feeding them to your bearded dragon as for they can be, they can be carrying parasites. And then the parasites can transfer to, to transfer to your bearded dragon and beard, your bearded dragon might not make it from that. So do not feed wild caught animals at all. And the last thing I want to say about, um, sort of a disclaimer about bugs is you should not be feeding fireflies or any like glow in the dark sort of worms because those can be toxic to your bearded dragon and then your bearded dragon can get, can get poisoned and die. So once again, please do not feed wild caught, feed in between the width of their eyes and do not feed any fireflies or um, glow in the dark worms of that sort. So let's start with the bugs. I'm only going to be talking about a couple of bugs in this video because I don't want the video to get too long, but I just want you to know that there are many options of bug you can feed, bugs you can feed, but I'm just telling you the most popular. So the first bug is crickets. Crickets are available because you can just go to the pets, pet store and you can get um, crickets like basically anywhere. And also crickets are easy to keep and they come in different sizes. Crickets are easy to keep because you can just buy a cricket um, keeper, which is where I store my crickets. Um, currently I don't have crickets because I have dubias right now, but that's besides the point. So you can store crickets in cricket keepers. And then what I do is I would put egg cartons and it serves as a great um, sort of enrichment because your, the, your crickets can climb uh, around the egg cartons and yeah. So that's why crickets make good feeders. I'm pretty sure they have the most popular feeder because they're so widespread. Now the bad things about crickets or the cons are that crickets are very loud and annoying. If you get adult crickets, they will chirp like every single five seconds and it can be pretty annoying. But if you're a person who doesn't really mind the noise, then crickets are for you. Also, crickets have a tendency to nibble on slower reptiles and amphibians. So I'm not saying that crickets will always nibble on bearded dragons or any lizard for that matter, but you should be mindful of that because crickets can be dangerous. And Exotic Lairs, which is a um, animal, like more arachnid YouTube channel, um, they showed their crickets eating an entire gecko that accidentally got inside the um the um 
little cricket keeper. So you should be really careful when feeding crickets and you have to watch over, and when you do feed crickets, you have to watch over them. And so I recommend only feeding a couple crickets at a time, or you can just um, use the tongs to feed them or hand feed them. Now I mentioned this a little bit when, now I already mentioned this a little bit, but crickets can be fast. And this might be a good thing or a bad thing for you because being fast, they can be hard for you to catch if your lizard, such as Bearded Dragon, does like it's too lazy to catch them because Bearded Dragons are lazy. And, and crickets being fast can also be a good thing because then your Bearded Dragon might run after them and it can be a great sort of, um, of exercise. Crickets have 15% protein and about 3% fat. Moving on, we're going to talk about mealworms and superworms. I care, I categorize them together because, um, they're pretty similar in looks but in care not so much. Mealworms and superworms are pretty available because usually when you go to the pet store um they will have them there. Mealworms can be kept for a long time if refrigerated because they sort of go into this dormant state where they kind of where they kind of like slow down and so they will live longer in a sense. Mealworms have 20% protein and 13% fat. However, superworms have 17% protein and 16% fat. So mealworms have more protein than superworms and they have less fat. Which is why you might be thinking that of course I should get mealworms. However, superworms contain a whopping 11% of calcium, which is why you might want to feed them. And Mealworms, not so much. They contain a 3% amount of calcium. So if you do feed mealworms, you should be um, dusting them with calcium. Also, I would just like to mention about mealworms something. Mealworms are also, can be bad for your dragon because mealworms contain something called chitin. And chitin kind of like blocks everything in the system and it can cause impaction issues. So you shouldn't be feeding mealworms in large amounts and you really shouldn't be feeding them as your main food source. What I like to do personally is feed my bearded dragon a variety of bugs so that she can eat whatever she wants. And also if your bearded dragon is eating, only eating one food source, they might get pretty bored about that and they can become really picky. So if you do decide to feed mealworms, you should feed them every once in a while, but not all the time. We're going to move on to our next feeder source, which is dubia roaches. Now, dubia roaches are sort of available. I mean, you're not generally gonna see them at pet stores, um, like with pet stores are selling them, but you will see them online. And they can be kind of expensive. However, I personally love dubias so much because they are really easy to keep. I actually breed my own colony of dubias and I'm actually going to make a video about that, how I like breed dubias, but that's besides the point right now. Um, and dubias are really easy to keep. You don't really have to give them substrate. I don't. I just give them egg cartons to climb on like how I do with the crickets. And I feed them the this sort of like looking sand thing. Don't feed them sand. I don't think they're gonna eat it. Um but actually I order my dubias from I don't remember where I order them. But anyways I order my dubias from a source that give that um also sells dubia food and dubia water. So that's how I um give the food and water for my um dubias dubia colony. Also Dubia roaches can last a pretty long time, especially if you're breeding them. And if your dubia happens, if, well, if one of your dubias hap, happen to die unexpectedly, they're not going to foul or smell up like how, how, like how I know crickets do. Well, so that's pretty good if your dubia roaches die, unfortunately. And dubia roaches don't, and dubia roaches tend to not dibble, nibble on your reptile. So that's a good thing. Also, dubia roaches 
tend to not climb on plastic or glass. I don't think they can climb at all, really. So if you just keep them in a small container that has enough height to it, then they shouldn't crawl out, so to speak. However, dubia roaches are good at hiding in small spaces. So for example, I have this large hide that my bearded dragon can um, climb on and sleep in, but they tend to go behind that. And so they can hide in small spaces. Dubia roaches have 23% protein and 7% fat. The last feeder insect I'm going to be talking about is hornworms. And I just quickly want to mention that there are, um, I think I already mentioned this, but I just want to say it again. There are many other bugs you can feed your bearded dragon. Um, so these aren't the only ones, but I find them to be the most popular. Now, hornworms are probably the most beautiful of, um, feeder insects because they're this, like, mintish bluish green color and it's really pretty also hornworms have this um horn on their rear end and it looks spiky and sharp but really it's soft so your bearded dragon or yourself if you're holding a hornworm should have nothing to worry about hornworms tend to be kind of expensive so really they should be fed sort of as a treat because they can be expensive and also hornworms seem to be really tasty because my bearded dragon loves to eat hornworms. A negative to hornworms is that they grow really fast. However, if your bearded dragon is dehydrated, hornworms make an excellent choice of food because they have because they have 9% protein and wait until you hear this, they have 85% um, moisture in them. So if your bearded dragon is dehydrated, you can you should definitely feed them hornworms. So that's it for all the bugs I'm going to be talking about in today's video. However, don't forget, I'm still going to talk about vegetables. So moving on to the vegetables. What I personally feed my bearded dragon is collard greens, mustard greens, dandelion greens, and I'm pretty sure that that's all I feed my bearded dragon. But there is also a variety of other foods you can feed your bearded dragon. You should avoid lettuce, spinach, avocados, and rubber. Rhubarb. I don't know how to pronounce that. So these are just some vegetables to avoid and some vegetables that I personally feed my bearded dragon. As I mentioned earlier, bearded dragons can be very picky with their vegetables, so I don't blame you if they don't eat it. But you should definitely try your best to get your bearded dragon to eat their vegetables. Also, you can feed your bearded dragons a couple of fruits too, such as blueberries, strawberries, and raspberries and banana. That's what I personally feed my bearded dragon too. So as a snack, you can also feed um, fruits. So these are just some of the vegetables to avoid and some vegetables to feed your bearded dragon. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope you learned more about a bearded dragon's diet. Make sure to comment any video ideas you have down below and I'll see you next time. And if, and so the mealworm would win out of that, like, you know.